Hey, we got Drew's views here, and I'm gonna do a little segment I'm gonna call Detective Drew, the verse edition. So I just watched a, or I just reacted to Steven Universe season four, episode 11, Steven's Dream. If you haven't seen that reaction, then yeah, go back and watch it, but you'll see that at the end of it, when I do my normal recap, I mostly just had a litany of questions because uh, it was a pretty huge episode in terms of certain revelations or things that happened. I thought it was at least. And so, yeah, like I said, just a lot of questions. Then when I went back to edit together the reaction, I'm basically watching the episode again, I noticed there's some things I missed. Maybe that would have filled in some of my questions a little bit, but really, uh, especially like get, hearing the dialogue over again, really listening to it, it just led to more questions or more things that were interesting to me and more things I found curious, like bits of dialogue, strange, or that I think fit the bigger picture here. So I just wanted to take this little video to try to go through them, basically just break down and analyze the episode more than I do for most of them with the normal re reaction. And yeah, I'm wearing this hat normally reserved for uh, my Peaky Blinders reaction, so a little advertisement to go check those out as well but uh since that shows on hiatus so I, I use it as my detective hat too a little sherlock holmes might have wore something like this not really he, he definitely wore a different style it doesn't matter let's get into the steven's dream episode here so i'll throw up a few screen caps of the different things i'm talking about so in general the episode is Steven uh, starts having dreams where he starts like crying then or they say crying but it, it seems like water is like well I mean it is crying we see what's coming from but just the way it's animated is a little a little bit strange and then there's something else specific about the animation not to do with all my questions but something I missed definitely the first time or when I saw it when I reacted so that, that was more toward the middle of the episode I'll get into that but anyway Steven uh, he's basically having those like astral projection things again we've seen this is his power now we find out later in the episode that he's seeing what literally what blue diamond is seeing so did it just start now like this because she just came to earth yesterday or the, you know whenever this episode started to look at what we see she's looking at that's something that steven can't control kind of like the i guess like the that lara's body switch episode it's something like that where he's not able to control it just happens I guess initially, the, I haven't referenced it, I think, in the reaction, but the Kiki dream episode as well, that's when he wasn't able to, con when he's being the dream warrior, he wasn't able to, initially at least, he wasn't able, uh, cognizant of getting into that um, astral projection, I'll call it. Or do, does Steven and Blue Diamond have uh, some other type of link that as soon as she's in his proximity, he's seeing through her? So we don't know about that. And then we see that... Uh, well, all right, before, that was the first time he has the dream where we don't see that palanquin yet. Then Greg walks him to the house here, and there's some very interesting things in this whole little speech Greg gives him. So uh, we see, he says that uh, he did not press Rose for details on Pink Diamond when Stephen asked about that. Pretty convenient uh, that he wouldn't... Uh, ask about that and the other stuff we want to know, but fine. But then he says a couple of things that they talked about, and it says they mostly talked about feeling. I thought that's a little interesting. Rose is always um, trying to get how, at how humans feel to understand them, I suppose. Then this is something I really found curious. Greg says they both made mistakes. I thought Disco was going to come back, haha. And she started a war now the disco thing yeah fine but uh, <laughs> i didn't really think that's what Greg, mr universe was supposed to be disco music it seemed more like hair metal but not the point i'm making right now the curious thing is that apparently what greg's saying is that rose starting the war was a mistake is this just him editorializing like, like does is greg think it was a mistake that's why he's saying that is it just a joke like because the way it's set up structured everything it is a joke anyway in the, in the script but my real question i guess is does rose view the war as a mistake because we don't necessarily have anything like that i mean 
she seemingly got what her goal was in terms of saving the earth, I guess, from Pink Diamond, all the diamonds, all homeworld in general. So why was it a mistake? Because a lot of lives were lost. Is it, I mean, something else? Like, and I'm gonna get back to this point a little bit because a lot of stuff in this episode made me curious about, which I already have been a lot, but about all the time between Stevens Bourne and then the war, all this stuff. I'll, I'll get back to it, but I thought it was very interesting that Greg made that comment. And on my first viewing, I didn't really pick up on it as much. Also, what I didn't pick up on is another quote from him here that says, she felt like she needed to confess everything, which then he says she doesn't need to. And then the whole point to Stephen is like, he loved her for who she is and the present, all that stuff. But apparently she attempted to confess everything to Greg. He didn't want to hear it. So what, what exactly is she confessing here? Other mistakes she made or that she considers mistakes? Hmm. Very interesting. All right, so then Stephen goes back to sleep, has that dream again this time he's like looking around and he has more control he sees the palanquin that's pink obviously it's pink diamonds connie has the book he asks um the cgs for the information we find out that uh just like the bismuth thing amethyst doesn't know anything about this so this is really drawing kind of a line in the sand where some of these these mysteries are like the place where they are it's between when i guess from what we've seen at least the episode where we initially saw blue diamond where that's the episode where sapphire and ruby meet kind of and then so like well we don't know what happens between when sapphire and ruby get together and join rose go under rose's wing to the time where like amethyst is born or at least where rose or whoever takes her to, to join up with them and that's like a huge gap of time i believe where apparently Rose made some of these mistakes or things she considers mistakes. Steven basically throws a temper tantrum, which is pretty justified for the most part, although he is acting a lot more petulant here with the crystal gems than we've ever seen in the past, especially saying like, I want to go there now, like being very demanding. Then Garnet says something else I found very curious here. She tells him to stop because he's making Pearl upset. Now, from what we see from the rest of the episode, it seems like Garnet's the one that's most upset, acting out of character, etc. Um, is she just deflecting, wanting to talk about that by saying it's Pearl that's upset? It doesn't seem like that, but if we look at what that means, then why is why is Pearl upset over this thing about Pink Diamond? It doesn't really make sense to me. Like, she's upset that Pink Diamond got shattered or this event or whatever. Whatever Rose would have wanted is what Pearl seemingly would have wanted just being a like a devoted follower and all that that we see she is and even more than just that so why is this upsetting her like about the war i mean even them winning the war it seems like that's what pearl wants as well what's why is this scene something that's going to be upsetting to pearl is because it's something that was upsetting to rose but why because she had to like, kill someone i guess it seems like there's something more there though um, I don't know. Instead, Stephen enlists Greg to bring him or help him go to the place. And this is where, oh, this here's why they introduced Uncle Andy last time, or a couple episodes ago, to uh, have a plane on deck for them to take them to Korea, apparently, is what this is. So I was I initially, I was like, oh, is already in Japan? I didn't really think much about it. Completely missed this one whole part right here where... They, I don't know how I missed it. I guess I was probably talking or something during the reaction, but um, trying to make some joke or something. But they completely break the fourth wall here, and Greg like sees himself being animated, and there's a lot of little animations on the show. So I looked this up. So I guess it's uh, a Steven Universe, and a lot of shows have a lot of their animation done at Rough Draft Studios, which has an office in Seoul, uh, South Korea, which is yeah, apparently where... Steven Universe is animated, so there's like a whole end joke here. Complete fourth wall break I missed. And then, I, it didn't, you know, I, I didn't know what language Greg was trying to speak in these scenes here, but apparently it's Korean. So, okay, uh, that's what I was mentioning before. That doesn't necessarily have to do with my mysteries here, but, or at least that's one that's e easily solved. All right, so they come up to the fence. 
Uh, Greg says this feels familiar. I'm assuming that's a reference to when he initially went to find Rose after they met at his show, and then they, they had, had the fence up around the house. And so this is where I really missed a lot of this stuff on my first watch. Partially it's because Blue Diamond was just whispering, essentially, and I couldn't, literally couldn't hear what she was saying. And a question about her voice I have, too, is it she's just supposed to be naturally soft-spoken like this, like kind of ethereal talking? I think that's it. Or is it partially because she's supposed to be, like, super old? That's why she talks like that. I don't know. I think it's the former, though. Even her, like, her pearls, like, kind of like a little ballerina. I pointed that out in the first time we saw them. It's like a very kind of... Uh, I don't know, Blue Diamond seems more dainty, I guess. Although she's also creepy, which I mentioned I didn't pick up on in my first reaction. Uh, kind of her face, the way she turns, all this stuff, and, and her speech pattern. So, all right, so I wrote down this whole dialogue she has here. and Try to break this down a little bit. She says, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I should have done more. Yellow says it'll all be over soon. I wonder what you would think. This is your planet, after all. I still think it is. So first of all, I completely did not hear that she mentioned, reference Yellow Diamond at all. Apparently they're talking still or whatever, they have plans, which Yellow Diamond says it'll all be over. It seems like Yellow Diamond must have taken control of the Earth mission here. Well, based on some other dialogue later in the episode too, it seems like, uh, or even right, no, right here where she says it's your planet after all, I still think it is. It seems like Pink Diamond was the one initially in charge here of Earth. That makes sense for why Rose would fight her would target her in the first place as well then for the rebellion. But now that she's dead, I guess, or shattered, that's why Yellow Diamond is kind of in, seemingly in charge of it. Although it doesn't seem to think it's as important or anything like that based on what we've seen from her, managing it from afar or whatever, sending other people, whatnot. All right, so and she says she should have done more. What else could she have done? We don't know. Greg kind of pops in and Blue Diamond says, bring it here. So we see she's referring to humans as things. No surprise, I guess. Uh, but it really kind of like hammers home the differences of opinions here on home world and things. But Blue Diamond does try to somewhat <laughs> relate to humans, I guess. Say, as she points out the strangeness that a powerful being like a diamond could perish on an earth where these fragile humans can thrive. Obviously, she's still holding up one diamond as like worth more than like all of humanity or whatever or countless other things maybe but still pointing out that comparison i guess then like seeing that she's <laughs> obviously very upset here greg says were you close she says very so this is I, I did mention this a little bit on the recap from my reaction video of this but why was blue diamond apparently so close to pink diamond here are just all the diamonds close naturally because there's so few of them are they like all somehow considered like sisters or whatever pulled from the same ground what you know however they're made but it seems like pink diamond and blue diamond specifically have had some kind of special more special relationship is it like some type of pearl rose situation i don't know uh, something else there, there's got to be something there that we're gonna find more out about then all right now here's a line that this is not a line that i missed the first time or anything but Thinking about it more, it is very curious to me. Blue Diamond says there's a geo weapon incubating in your planet that will destroy everything shortly. So on face value, it kind of seems, well, when I first reacted to it, I was like, wait, is this somehow Steven is a weapon or something like that? But, you know, watching it again, analyzing this, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Maybe it is still though, but uh, on face value with this line, it seems to be about the cluster, which we obviously know about already, but I don't, <sighs> If it really is about the cluster, I mean, Steven, stop that already. I know it's still a threat to uh, still potentially destroy the Earth someday, I think, but it is she possibly talking about something else here? Because, I mean, there's a couple of things that make me think that. Well, the show might just still call it the cluster since we already know about it. Why, why not just have her say it is the cluster? Say the cluster is in your plan and it'll destroy it shortly. Why call it this other weapon? Also, even if the cluster still can potentially destroy the Earth, based on it getting stopped for now at least, why would the, it doesn't seem like the diamonds would be so confident that Blue Diamond would just be saying, it's, it's uh, gonna destroy it shortly. She literally said shortly, like in a short period of time. And that could mean a lot of, I mean, that, that, 
considering how long these gems' lives are, maybe that could mean a long time for Earth, and she just can't comprehend how short it is for humans on Earth right now, but I don't know. And then also specifically says Yellow, says it'll all be over soon. And based on the last time we saw Yellow Diamond, why would she be confident that the cluster was still going to destroy Earth anytime soon? So is there some other type of weapon? That's what I'm going back to. Maybe it is Steven is somehow still involved or Rose is involved or just something else we don't know about. Hmm. I just think there's, yeah, th that one really just pops out to me. All right, then getting this wrapped up. Kidnaps Greg, uh, yeah, Greg. She says, I really shouldn't be here, but I'm glad I came back one last time. I can save one last piece of her legacy. So still all about Pink Diamond. And why does she say she shouldn't be here? Why not? I mean, she seems to be one of the most powerful gems on Homeworld. Can't she do it? whatever she wants? Did Yellow Diamond tell her not to go here for some reason? Is there some other reason she shouldn't go down there? Because the weapon could erupt any moment? Is that all it is or whatever? But she came back one last time. Does that mean she's come back several times? Has she been back since the war actually ended? Or is this the first time she's coming back? Don't know that. Don't know if that's important and saving one last piece of her legacy, meaning just taking Greg. Initially, I was like trying to figure out um, on my first reaction, does did she like somehow figure out Greg is tied to Rose, that's why she's taking him, or tied to Steven, something like that. But no, watching it again, like breaking it down, it does seem like, based on what she's saying, like trying to relate to Earth, especially like how Greg says he lost something too. And she's saying, she says like, humans don't deserve this. Uh, so even though she calls them, it, it, it doesn't completely see them as human, for lack of a better word, or a gem, or equal in any way, calls them it, she still, like, has some sympathy, I guess you would call it, or empathy, to, like, think that humans don't deserve to be destroyed, because they can feel, I guess, is, like, something like, dolphins are really smart, we should save them, or something, like, I'm trying to make some allusion to like humans and animals or something but how she sees it but anyway the question i had then is she saved quote unquote other things related to pink diamond like she's trying to do with greg this human here this what she thinks i guess is a random human yeah that's uh, curious and garnet flies in to end the episode and she says okay yeah so i skipped over this before but when garnet and steven talk outside before he goes to his dad went after he has his temper tantrum. Garnet says she's scared, which is out of, very out of character. Seemingly, she can't go there. So why is she so scared to be just to be near Blue Diamond? Is it as like in the my direction? I did point out Sapphire obviously had a connection to Blue Diamond when in that initial episode we saw that she has some power over her. And then at the end of the episode, Garnet seemingly wraps up what the explanation is. Because she says, I'm sorry I saw her see me and find all of us. So that's the explanation for why she wouldn't go there. Does that completely track? I'm not so sure. Before she's like, I'm scared. Would If she just looked in her future vision and saw, oh wait, if I go near Blue Diamond, she'll see me and she'll find all of us and disrupt this in some way. Wouldn't she just be like, well, I think it's smarter not to go near there to avoid this scenario happening. Not like, I'm scared, I can't go near her. Like... And just the whole way she reacts seeing the palanquin picture and everything like that it seems like something more to me it probably specifically related to blue diamond pink diamond all this stuff than just like using future vision to like try to avoid a situation so i i don't think we're getting the whole picture from garnet there like i was kind of talking about before i'm just trying to piece together the gap i guess between you know the sapphire ruby meaning and stuff and then the stuff that amethyst and steven don't know about so that would put the time from when Amethyst joins the group. And then all the stuff about Rose saying, apparently having regrets, saying she made mistakes, at least according to Greg. She said that what happened that made her kind of change her course here against this war to uh, whatever she did, which apparently we know what she did at the end. She had Steven. We still don't know how exactly, but it's, it's seeming more and more to me like that's, yeah, there's something there that made her have the idea to have Steven to try to win that way and somehow i've kind of talked about before like maybe uh, she'll use steven because he can feel as a human too and as a gem to try to like have harmony between homeworld and earth and all of this 
I still think that's kind of how it, the show will probably end, something like that. But yeah, I'm trying to detective Drew here, trying to figure out, piece the clues together and find out what happened, you know, in this time we don't know about. Is it just Rose getting upset, uh, being upset because she had to shatter someone, some gem, pink diamond? I don't know. There's, there's something more there to me. Come on, let's take a break. I think this mountain's really messing you up. No, Dad. This can only mean we're getting closer. Stuff from the past and with this episode. Stuff that's gonna happen in the future. What? Now watch, I did the segment. Maybe it'll all be explained to me next episode. Season 4, episode 12. I doubt it, though. I think they're gonna keep stringing me along here. I guess you guys watching this most likely have, are caught up on the show. Maybe you don't even know the answers to all this stuff by now. Um, when it's, I think, at the end of season 5. Maybe you do know a lot of it, but... I don't know, I'm like, this This episode is good, uh, Steven's Dream, because it, it's making me think about all this stuff. And that's one of the things I really like about this show, and shows in general, like, kind of the mystery, and uh, seeing what the writers want us to know, what they don't want, what they're telling us, what they're seeding in, foreshadowing, all this stuff. So, I right. hope you guys, uh, you The Verse fans, uh, enjoyed my Detective Drew segment here, a little, little deeper analysis on a Steven Universe episode. Please uh, do go back and watch that reaction if you haven't yet. And uh, join me next week for another episode 4.12, 4.13, cruising along with the verse. And you can check out some of my other shows too if you like. All right. But I'm out of here for now. Peace. Come on.